Hey, hello! In this series of tutorials, I would like to show you how you can learn R based on your Excel knowledge. We'll do things side by side, first in Excel and then in R. Let's get started. So in Excel, when you want to enter a value into a cell uh, to use it afterwards to make calculations, you simply move to the cell where you want to enter the value, type the value, press return, and there it is and you can read it right away out of the cell. In R, in order to store a value, we need to create a variable for it. And the way to create a variable is to give it a name, and we can give it the same name as the Excel cell A1, and then use the assignment operator, and then the value return, and you will note here in the environment that we have A1 variable, it's numeric by the way, and it contains the value 12. If we want to display the content of a variable directly in the console, we just type its name, press return, and there it is. So it's a vector, it's a numeric vector, it contains only one element, and the content, the value of the content is 12. Now let's say we want to do something more advanced, for example we want to sum up some numbers. Now what we can do in Excel is, you know, we can enter the numbers in a column, for example, we have a 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, and here we have exactly six values, and the way to sum them up is, you know, you go A7, write sum, and then typically you drag across and say, okay, sum from A1 to A. 6. And the sum, as you can see, is 42. Now, in R, first thing that we have to do is to create a vector that contains the six values to sum up. So we can call this vector A1 or give it a different name. If we use A1, the previous A1 vector will be overwritten. So let's do that. 1, assignment operator. And then we are using the C, which is concatenate function, to write the values. So C, and then we say 12, comma, 10, comma, 8, comma, 6 comma 4 comma 2 enter and now you can note up here in the environment a1 it's a numerical vector it contains six elements and they are indexed from 1 to 6 and these are the six elements it contains when to print the content of the vector a1 enter and here it is. So it's still monodimensional, one, uh, one vector, and it contains 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, and 2. Now let's see, see if we want to sum it like we did in Excel. We can write sum and the name of the vector. Enter, and here's a 42. Now note that in Excel, the 42 ended up in A7. The value of the calculation is assigned to a cell, and it will stay there. In the case of R, we haven't assigned it to anything, but uh, we could do that. So let's say we create a new variable, we'll call it A7, same name as the Excel cell, but it could be anything, and we write sum A1. There it is. Now, if you're not here in the environment, we have a new variable called A7. It contains a numeric. 42, which is exactly the sum of the content of A1. Now, a difference between R and Excel is that if I now change the value here, say that 12 becomes a 20, automatically the sum in A7 is also updated accordingly. Now, this doesn't happen in R. So in R, I need to rerun the sum function if I want to change the value of one of the elements of A1. And by the way, in order to do that and access directly the first element of A1, we can write A11, that's the index, and we change it to 20. And you can see up here that indeed the first value of A1 is now 20. And now we can repeat the assignment to A7 using the sum command. I just press arrow up, arrow up to get back the previous command, A7, enter, and now you see that A7 is 50. R doesn't have unless you script it, which we will see how to do it in a subsequent video, it doesn't automatically recalculate the value of, for example, A7 based on the change of A1. You have to do it explicitly. Now let's clean up both Excel and R. Press function delete on the Mac. And in the case of R, we want to clear both of the console. So we do edit clear console in our studio. And here we want to clear the environment. So we press clear and yes. Okay. Now let's say we want to enter a matrix. So we in Excel, we go to A1, we do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we have entered number in each cell, and it's a 3x3 three three matrix. And now let's see how to enter the same matrix in R. Actually, there are three ways to do it. First one is to do it by row using R bind. Second one is to do it by column using C bind. The third one is to use the matrix function. Let's see all of them. So let's move to R, A1, assignment operator, R bind. We want to specify it by rows, C, concatenate, and then let's enter it by row. One, two, three, that's first row. Second row, four, five, six. C 
see again, 7, 8, 9, and this is the third row. Enter, let's print it, and that's exactly how it is in Excel. Or we can use CBind and enter it by columns. So the first column will be 147, the second column will be 258, and the third column will be 369. There you have it, and let's print it again, and it's the same as before. Third way is to use the matrix function, and the matrix function is like this, a1 matrix, and then we use the C function concatenate, but this time we don't have to split by row by columns, we'll define this later on, so we just enter all values, and now we say n rows, how many rows my call my matrix has, it's gonna be 3, how many columns my matrix is, and that's gonna be 3 as well, and then we have to tell whether the information, the numbers, the content of the matrix is specific by row or by column and the default is by column but we want to specify it by row because you see the sequences actually by row one two three is the first row four five six second row seven eight nine that's third row so we have to put it by row equal through and there you have it and that's exactly as before if for any reasons we had omitted to specify by row it defaults to false and that assumes that c is specifying the values by column and that would have brought to an unexpected result and you see that now the matrix is not as we want it. It's actually the rows and the columns have been reversed, so it's transposed. All right, this concludes this uh, first episode of uh, R for Excel users. I hope you liked it, and uh, if so, please let me know, and there will be more videos coming up. Thank you. Bye.